Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Welcome to Payoneer's uh, webinar named Attracting Foreign E-Commerce Clients to Your VA Agency. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we will be recording this session uh, for those who aren't able to join. We encourage everyone to write their questions for the speakers as we will be addressing them at the end of the presentations. Hi, everyone. Uh, is everyone hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay. I can, I All right. Hear you. Yeah. All right. So in today's webinar, uh, you will learn industry trends, uh, the opportunity in e-commerce, and how to level up your branding as a VA agency. I am pleased to introduce to you our speakers today. First up is Mr. Connor Gillivan, co-founder and chief marketing officer of FreeUp.com. Uh, FreeUp.com is the hands-on hiring marketplace connecting hundreds of online business owners with reliable, pre-vetted remote workers. He is an avid writer on his own site, ConnorGillivan.com, and his business advice can be found in top publications such as WebRetailer.com. And then our second speaker would be Ms. Eileen Bermeo, Head of Marketing uh, for Southeast Asia uh, of Pioneer. Eileen has over 15 years of experience in marketing and communications, working on local and global brands in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia. Before joining Pioneer, she was an award-winning strategist who won at Cannes Lions and the New York Festival's Advertising Awards and the One Show amongst others. So without further ado, uh, since we have a lot of uh, topics to, to talk about, I will turn over the floor to Mr. Connor. Um, so hold on. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. Awesome. Thanks for the introduction there, Janelle. Appreciate it. And uh, glad that I could uh, be here today and, and chat with everyone here a little bit about e-commerce and how it may be an opportunity for some of the virtual assistants or VA agencies that are listening. Um, just a little bit of a background. So I actually sold um, on Amazon and had an e-commerce business from 2009 through 2016. Um, and was able to really build that business to sell millions of dollars through Amazon. And my business partner and I ended up hiring a lot of e-commerce VAs and VA agencies to help us as we were growing that business. Um, as Janelle was saying today, I help businesses find virtual assistants and VA agencies to help them grow their e-commerce business. Um, so I'm, I'm very well versed in e-commerce and how much VAs can be a help as you're growing and trying to take things off your plate. Um, and so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about those experiences, dive it a little bit into the opportunities that are out there when it comes to working with e-commerce clients, um, talk to you a little bit about the whole freelance industry and how that's been growing a lot over the past five to 10 years, um, and then give you some tips that you can actually use when you're going out and trying to pitch some of these e-commerce clients. Um, there we go. Just a little bit of a lag. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so first I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about industry trends. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you already know since you're offering VA services that the whole world of remote work is changing very rapidly. Um, we, we've kind of seen it happening over the past 5, 10, 15 years, depending on how long you've been in the industry. Um, I myself started back when Upwork, which is one of the larger platforms, was two separate companies. It was Odesk and Elance. Um, some of you may be familiar with those two companies as well. Um, but things have really changed since it was just them kind of ruling the world and, and, and the industry. Um, there's a lot of reports that are 
that are released each year that show that the number of freelancers globally are increasing every year, and it has been for the past five years or so. I, I think in the U.S. in specific, it's already 35% of the, the working economy is somehow freelancing, and they expect that within the next 10 years, that's going to increase all the way up to 50% plus. So things are moving quickly. Um, uh, the reasons why that's happening, we, we're seeing a lot of people in the millennial generation. So those people aged now probably 20 to 35 or so, um, they're looking for jobs outside the traditional nine to five. And some of you listening may be a part of that cohort that are trying to stay away from long travel times to, to get into work and um, you know, sitting at a desk from nine to five or however long it may be. And then we're also seeing a big movement from higher level, more experienced professionals. Um, you know, people that maybe they worked in corporate for 10, 15, 20 years, and now they want to spend more time at home. They want more time with their family and they want to offer their services online to try to work with different companies. Um, another, a couple other things we're seeing in the industry is there's a lot of businesses just getting over the whole stigma of outsourcing. Um, you know, a lot of, from my experience, a lot of business owners, I think, used to think of outsourcing just as finding a, an office um, offshore, whether it was in the Philippines or India or um, another country outside of their home country, um, and they would kind of push all of their work there. Um, and for a lot of people, for whatever reason, it, it has kind of a, a negative stigma, but a lot of people are starting to get over that and realizing that there's this whole world of a freelance economy where you know real people are offering real services and it can add real value to your business as well. Um, and, and with that stigma being removed, we see companies thinking about having a 100% remote workforce, or at least part of it, right? So FreeUp it actually runs as a fully remote company. Um, I myself live in Denver, Colorado in the US. Um, my business partner and our CEO, he lives in, oh, got something popped up there, Windows. Um, I myself live in Denver. My business partner lives, oh, someone's controlling the, Janelle, is that you? <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> if you can go back a slide. Let's see. All right, cool. Um, and then, yeah, so I was saying that we run completely remote. I live in Denver. Uh, my business partner and our CEO, he lives in Orlando, Florida in the US. Um, we actually have about 30 people that live in the Philippines that help us run the company. And then we have about another 10 to 15 that live around the US and uh, the UK that, that help us run the company. So there's a lot of business owners out there now that are thinking about going remote and they're finding ways to do that by hiring virtual assistants like you guys or VA agencies as well. Um, and, and that's kind of where the industry is going. We're, we're seeing a lot of those movements happening um, from small to large companies. Um, and it's really exciting. You know, that's something I, I really love and I love to follow this industry. It just continues to evolve and is super interesting. Awesome. So the e-commerce opportunity, that's kind of why we're here talking today, right? Um, you guys may be interested in working with e-commerce businesses. Maybe you have already, um, or you even have some current clients, which is you know really awesome. And so the thing that makes e-commerce such an opportunity uh, is a few things, right? So the first is that it's it's another industry that just continues to grow, continues to mature and and get better all around the world. We have you know the Amazon marketplace, there's eBay. Um, I, I know in Asia, there's a, a number of other marketplaces that are super popular. Um, and then you have uh, people who own their own websites as well, and they can sell anywhere in the world using platforms like Shopify or BigCommerce or Volusion. 
So there's there's all these options now to easily go out and, and start an e-commerce business and, and start selling products. Um, and the thing that makes it such an opportunity for you guys is that a lot of the tasks within an e-commerce business are, there's a lot of them that are pretty repetitive um, that are required on a regular basis um, and that just take up a lot of time. So a lot of those tasks, like I've kind of listed here, um, you know, they, they eat away at the business owner's time. And if the business owner is smart, um, over time, they're going to look for a VA or a VA agency that can take it off their plate, um, that they can rely on, they can work with over the long run, um, and so that they can focus on continuing to grow the business in other ways. Um, and so you'll, you'll kind of see a few things I listed here. We have, you know, product research, which might be helping an e-commerce client uh, research different products or product categories on the internet um, and kind of sending them lists of products that could be a good fit. Um, you have listing, which is the actual process of creating a page where that product will become for sale. Email management, um, you know, if, think about if you were to go into a store, there's tons of customer service inquiries. Um, it's the same online, right? It all just happens through email and phone. So you have email management, you have customer service, um, and then you have data management as well. So when you're working in an e-commerce business, you're you're dealing with a lot of product data that needs to be organized and um, and then uploaded to these different platforms that I was mentioning. So, like I said, a lot of work goes into running these e-commerce businesses, um, and it, and it's a great place where a VA or a VA agency can really help out and take things off that business owner's plate. Um, and then the last thing I just just put down here. Um, and this, I think this is true for a lot of people, and it's at least what I see with us running free up is that a lot of these e-commerce clients, they really want to find someone that they can work with in the long run and that they can rely on. Um, and for me, that that's a huge opportunity because as a VA or an agency, if you can find a client where you're locked in for 20, 30, 40 hours per week, um, and they want to use you as they grow over the next few years, that's a really great opportunity for you to have some stability even while you're freelancing, um, and, and it allows you to really grow with that company. Just move into the next slide here. Oh, did a jump. Okay, cool. Um, so this is just a quick slide about what e-commerce clients want, um, and this is from my own experience and then from my experience working with e-commerce businesses through FreeUp. Um, so reliability, I mean, that's, you know, that's number one at all times. They want, we want someone that, you know, says or does what they say they'll do, um, and they show up on time for things that they're supposed to be. Um, strong communication, this one's probably the biggest, I would say, especially when you're working remotely. Um, something you have to keep in mind is that not all business owners that you're going to work with have worked remotely before or have used a, a VA or an agency in the past. Um, and so it, it really comes down to you being able to bring some of your own communication best practices as you start that relationship. And it can really make a huge difference in how you're able to move, move forward together and keep working. Um, if the communication isn't there at first, I see a lot of people run into issues and then even if the VA or the agency was a, a great fit or extremely skilled, it just doesn't work out because they couldn't communicate, they couldn't stay on the same page. E-commerce clients want some want great English um, just so they can easily communicate. Um, and I think I think the Philippines does a, an amazing job with that. Everyone I've worked with from the Philippines, I can always have a, a great conversation with and um, just love the culture of the Philippines as well. Um, affordable rates, you know, people are always looking for that. Um, it's just something that helps them get ahead a little bit with their business. Um, and then come up some other things kind of more specific to the VA or the agency. Um, fast learners and expertise in the task if possible. So some of those skills I was mentioning or those tasks I was mentioning earlier, if you can come to the table already knowing how to do those for different platforms, um, that can be a, a big advantage for you. And then just, you know, long-term again, and, and e-commerce clients also want 
VAs and agencies that can think on their feet. You know, they're, they're people that they take the task, they see what's going on, um, and they can even adjust to different situations if they, even if they weren't trained on it. All right, cool. And so here's, I want to share a, a few final tips for how you can really impress e-commerce e clients. Um, you, you can use platforms like FreeUp, um, Upwork, Fiverr, there's so many out there where you can meet these e-commerce clients. You can even go on social media and put yourself out there. And um, I, I think we'll be getting into that in the, the next slide where, or the next presentation where um, they'll talk a little bit more about branding and how you can get your name out there and, and start to meet new clients. But once you actually meet them, um, here, here's a few things of, of how you can really impress them and make sure that the relationship grows and, and you can keep working together. Um, number one, you know, be on time for meetings. That's, I would say that's the biggest pet peeve of, of a lot of business owners. If, if you say you're going to be there at a certain time, show up five minutes early. Um, it'll, it'll make sure that you don't run into any issues and you'll be able to get started right when the business owner is ready as well. Um, another thing is when you're going into that interview process and you're starting to have some of those first conversations, um, you know, do a little research. Look at what products they're selling. Uh, look at what channels they're selling through. Maybe understand a little bit of the history of the company if that's available online. And those are just all talking points that you can bring to the table as you're meeting this person. And there are opportunities that show that you care and you kind of went the extra mile to look them up and, and understand what they're doing before you actually had a conversation with them. The third thing is, you know, get familiar with e-commerce tasks before trying to take on an e-commerce client. Um, you know, know, maybe you maybe you decide to specialize in Amazon and you know a little bit more about their marketplace and how to list products there or what customer service looks like there. Um, or, or you choose Shopify and you, you kind of do the same thing. But being able to speak a little bit of the lingo of e-commerce as you go into these meetings can be super helpful and may May, may help you actually land a, a job over, if you didn't have that information or that knowledge, they may pass on you and, and look for someone that knows a little bit more. Uh, the fourth thing is just always ask questions. Um, I know the Filipino culture can be a little bit more shy at times. Um, I, I know that just from working with a lot of Filipinos. Um, but what I found is that I really enjoy working with people that ask a lot of questions um, they make sure they understand things. They'll even go through it themselves so that I can give feedback or, or kind of provide more advice. Um, so, so never be afraid to ask questions when you're starting to work with someone. Um, if, if a business owner is turned off by that, I would say that it's probably not going to be a, a great relationship in the long run. Uh, the, the fifth thing is something I was talking about before, but just make sure you set clear communication methods up front. Um, and this can be you know, saying that, hey, on a daily basis, uh, I'm going to check in with you on Skype and I'll give you updates there. Or on a weekly basis, I'd love to have a meeting so we can go over what my goals are and where the business is going and, and how I can best help. Um, and, and those are that kind of bleeds into, you know, providing those clear and, and regular updates and, and making sure um, you guys are always on the same page at all times. So those are, you know, those are a few things to take into consideration as you're thinking about working with e-commerce clients, um, you know, take a note of these. I, I think these are great tips as well, just in general, no matter what client you're working with, but um, some of the things more specific to e-commerce will be best for those e-commerce businesses. Um, and yeah, I, I know we're gonna do some Q&A at the end. So uh, like Janelle said, you know, feel free to jot down any questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you can also, shoot me an email at the end of this, this webinar if you want to. Um, but yeah, it's a pleasure to be able to chat with you guys today and hope some of this was useful for you. And I will turn it back over to you, Janelle. Yes, thank you, Connor. All right, so I'll just prepare Eileen's presentation.
All right. I hope you guys can hear me fine. So thank you for joining us today. I will be taking you through how, you know, branding can be relevant for um, VAs and VA agencies. So if we, you know, um, I'll be taking you through th three things tonight. So the first is why, what is branding and why is it important? How you can get started in some brand building tools that are really practical and they're also free. So what is a brand and why is it important? In a nutshell, it's actually a shortcut to help people make decisions. We know that. And, you know, if I get you to do a quick exercise, you know, let's say you have a grocery list and you need to purchase the following items. There's coffee, there's shampoo, there's diapers, there's instant noodles. I'll give you maybe two seconds to think about, you know, what you will be buying if I give you this list. And likely, you know, you were brand sensitive on some and price sensitive on others. So why is that? It's because, you know, maybe you thought about buying Nescafe as a coffee. You probably didn't care about, you know, the brand of cooking oil that you get. And, you know, I remember speaking to some consumers before when the budget is tight in your household, you know, you, you start downsizing or downgrading certain products that you don't feel is as important. And that's where branding plays a role. So in real life, you know, you'd actually be very brand sensitive because you know that brands add value to companies and people as well. So we know from studies that companies who are branded are actually more profitable and they grow much faster. There's also better customer recognition. So you know that, you know, this is a Coca-Cola. It's not just some soft drink, you know, that the shampoo you're buying is, uh, buying is maybe Pantene. And there's also predisposition to loyalty. So you're more likely to be loyal to a brand and not a product. And, you know, brands help create trust as well. So, you know, you, you'd like certain brands because it reflects your own beliefs and value system. For example, you might like a BMW. You can probably, I cannot afford a BMW, but I like, you know, what they say about its performance. It's, you know, how good it looks. So there are certain values and beliefs that you attach to brands. And, you know, at the end of the day, a good brand can actually generate new customers for you and your company because it's easier to refer a brand versus a product or a service. So when we look at, um, sorry, moving on to then, okay. So when you think about, you know, um, do, do VAs need branding? You know, do you need kailangan yung ba ng mga branding? Um, oops, the slides are moving back and forth. Okay, let me try that one more time. Of course, you've seen the answer, yes. You know, brand, um, VAs need branding, whether you're an individual or a company. And the reason for this is that, um, sorry, you know, it's essential because it tells people about who you are and what you do. Okay, I'm so sorry about the slides. It's okay, there we go. So it says something about your reputation. So even as as individuals or as people, we're known about, you know, something. Um, personally, for example, people know that I like feeding people. So when I'm going out with somebody or when I'm at a office party, they know that I'd likely bring one of the better potluck food because my reputation is that of a foodie. Um, it can also imply quality or not. So, you know, word spreads around fast if your brand or company is not good to deal with. And a good brand is actually one of the biggest differences why your potential client will actually choose you over somebody else. So, you know, just as another exercise, I just took some screen grabs of some, um, you know, websites of other VA agencies. If you're a potential client and you're looking to hire maybe a small team of um, VAs for your e-commerce business, which would you choose? Would you have selected, you know, um, maybe virtual staff finder because you saw some numbers there that seemed impressive? Did you like the image? Did you like the color? Did it seemed professional to you. So these are things that actually, you know, describe something about your brand. 
And, you know, I'm sure you're probably wondering about cost. If you say, I have the cheapest rates anyway, I'm sure they'll select me. You know, we know also from experience that cheaper is not always better. You know, sometimes when something is so cheap, you it might be too good to be true. Something always gets sacrificed. It could be quality. You know, you're cheap, but you're very slow. Um, so that's not always a good, uh, you know, measure of, of how you'll be selected. Someone will also always price themselves cheaper than you. And this is where, you know, number three, you end up commoditizing your services because now it's just about the cheapest offering that clients can avail of. And that's actually not very good for yourself as as someone who, who work hard on these services. And at the end of the day, we actually want our clients to that we're, you know, that we offer good value for money. So, you know, maybe I've convinced you to start doing this whole branding thing. So where do we start? So I'll share some, you know, five areas and I'll take you through each one very quickly. So the first is the brand name. So, and also we shouldn't forget our logo. So this, the logo should feel like your name. When I see, let's say, uh, Mang Inasal as a restaurant, and Inasal is like a, you know, a native chicken dish. I, it should feel like, you know, it's something delicious. It implies something about the food. Um, it should also be memorable. So, you know, there are many companies and brands out there. Yours, yours has to stand out. And because we're in a business, it should sound professional and trustworthy because that's what your clients are buying into. So, you know, it's also important to be clear about what you op offer up front. So I've seen a lot of websites where you just list down, a, you know, all your services. And sometimes I don't even know exactly what this company is offering because in their, you know, in their desire to let you know about what they're offering and everything that's on it, you don't know what their expertise is. You also should establish your experience and how long you've been in the business. So experience is your, you know, it's your friend. And people should know that you've been in the industry for a long time. You have, uh, you know, years of experience under your belt. So highlight that if you're, if you have that as an asset. And don't be shy about what you're really good at. And I think, you know, if your clients are praising you for delivering a job well done, then you can ask them for testimonials, which is, you know, um, what we want to also um, have you guys have a think about. So testimonials are a good way to build trust and credibility. So you would see this in some websites and we'll, I'll, I'll show you again when I take you through some of the things that Pioneer does as part of its branding initiative. So, you know, why not tell the world how good you are and how happy they are with your services? And that's always a good thing. And, you know, it's always important to delight your clients with an amazing customer experience because this is actually one of the easiest and most tangible ways we, actually, we can actually let them feel like they're, you know, you're worth what they're paying for. So a few practical things to consider. You know, make it easy for them to reach you, whether it's your website, it's an email address, it should be upfront, even when you come offer, you know, ways for them to reach you. And you can over deliver on your agreed service level agreement. So if let's say you, you know, you wanted to get back to them within 24 hours, you know, you can give them a response within 18 hours or 10. And that actually, you know, surprises your clients in a good way. And number three is, you know, understand what it's like to be your client. So sometimes when they're rushing you to do certain things or they get mad about something, you know, it's important that we try to empathize and put ourselves in their shoes because, you know, there might be something that we're not seeing and to us, it's just, you know, it's just a small task, but actually it affects a whole lot of other things. And then, you know, advertising and promotions, um, you know, it's a good way to drive awareness and interest, but 
you have to be clear why you're investing in it in the first place because advertising is not cheap. You have to know, first of all, why you're doing it in the first place, what are your objectives, who your audience is, where can you reach them? Is it going to be on Facebook? Are you going to, you know, be in events where they are? And, you know, how are you going to to engage them? So your message is also very important. And so I'll just take you through quickly what Payoneer does for branding. So, you know, I'll, sh and this is where some of the things I talked about will come to life a little bit more. So when you look at the name and the logo, um, Payoneer was actually derived from being a pioneer in the fintech industry, even before fintech was a thing. And when you look at the why, you know, it looks like a blade of grass or a sprout or some kind. creative stimulating color and we want it to you know connote growth and creativity and it's also you know to differentiate us from other corporate brands that tend to use blue grays blacks and and you know that already sets us apart when we also go through our website we because this reflects our beliefs and values that our customers are the most important thing in our business if you're successful we're successful so we try to you know, put you guys, if you're a customer um, on our website, um, again, good to show that, you know, we're working for you as hard as we could. When you also look at some of our services, so for example, this is something that VAs can already use. This is paying your billing service. We spell out the benefits very, three things relevant to you, so it's easy to use. You know, it's you receive payments fast, and of course, the the cost is low. And these are you know important features that we want to communicate to our potential customers and clients. And when you look at you know, I was talking about awards. Let's not be shy about you know people praising us. We need this. We need people to see that hey, these guys are great to work with. So the billing service that you've just seen, and if you haven't used it yet. You know, I encourage everyone to just take a look, go to our website at spainier.com, take a look at billing service. You know, it's won an award and, and that's that's an important thing. And of course, below that is a testimonial again from our customer. And these are important things to highlight, especially when you're trying to attract new ones. And it also makes your current ones feel good. So, you know, we also conduct webinars like the one you're watching now too, as a form of advertising as well. And this is a way for us to reach and engage our audience. So there's many, many different ways that a brand or a VA company or, a, you know, or an individual can actually engage your clients. And now, you know, these are the last few slides that I have. Uh, if you've not been using this, I also suggest to take a look, they're free. Um, the first one is Typeform. So Typeform is a survey platform, and it's very visual, very easy to use. It's also free. You could use this to ask about customer service, to ask your clients about features that they probably want in the future. Customer feedback, something you can do very regularly. You can do this on Typeform. The other one that you see in the middle is Canva. So Canva is an online design tool. Anything from logos to social media posts to posters to, you know, wedding invites, um, you can do it all on Canva. Again, very easy to use and also free. The last one is Mailchimp. So if you have a sizable number of clients already, and you know, sometimes you have to email them periodically about updates um, to give them, you know, maybe a blog post, Mailchimp can automate this for you. So again, Mailchimp is free up to a certain number of um, email addresses, but for the most part, all the things that you're seeing on your screen is is free. And you know, we also use this over at Payoneer. So amazing, amazing tools. So you know, thank you. It's the end of my presentation. You can reach me on LinkedIn or you can email me at aileenbo at payoneer.com. We 
are also taking questions for the webinar right now. So there's the chat section screen. So please feel free to use that or get in touch with us if you know the questions are not coming yet at this time. So okay, thank you. Back to you, Jen. Hi guys, <laughs> sorry about that. All right, thank you, Eileen, and thank you, Connor. Right now, we don't have questions yet, but I have um, a question for Connor. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so what are the pros and cons of servicing e-commerce clients versus like the usual um, service provider clients? Yeah, sure. It's a good question. Um, so like I was saying a little bit in my presentation, I think one of the pros of e-commerce clients can be that a lot of them look for longer term relationships. Um, and so for for VAs and agencies, it can often create long term um, contracts where they have regular hours or projects that they're continuously working on. Um, a, a lot of other service providers may have one-off projects or they need you to build a website or, you know, do something for them um, and then they're they're kind of good and they can handle it themselves. So I would say that's one pro of, of an e-commerce client. Um, a con of an e-commerce client may be um, <laughs> there's a lot of business owners out there that are in the e-commerce world that are, you know, they're startups, they're younger. Um, and they, they may be learning as they're going, um, so they may not be as experienced working remotely or hiring VAs as um, some other types of businesses out there. Um, so that may be one con, is that you're just, you, you got to go into the relationship knowing that um, they may be learning as they're going, um, and um, as long as you're okay with that and you're open to taking feedback and even giving them some advice at times, um, it can it can work out on both ends. All right. Okay. So we have a question from Paul Ignacio. Uh, the question is, what's the best way to start finding clients for digital services? Uh, they want to outsource apart from like uh, freelance marketplaces. Uh, yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a good question. I can answer that. Um, yeah, so I mean, it kind of what um, kind of what Eileen was saying. You know, there's a lot of ways that you can brand yourself and and get yourself out there. Um, one of the most common ways that I see VAs find clients without going through a marketplace is um, through social media channels. Whether it's finding Facebook groups where digital business owners are looking to hire or they're talking about different aspects of their business and joining those groups, getting involved, introducing yourself, answering questions, being helpful where you can. Um, I've seen a lot of those types of interactions lead to clients for VAs. Um, and then, yeah, that I mean, that would be the, my biggest tip is find some Facebook groups, get in there, and try to make some connections. All right, um, Eileen, uh, do you want to add to that? Um, I actually agree with Connor. So, you know, one of the important things is actually to put yourself out there. Uh, so joining your Facebook groups, definitely looking at, you know, local communities as well, looking at referrals. Mm -hmm. Those are one of the things you can consider. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then I have a question for Eileen. Um, so which, which is the best promotional channel that you would recommend for VAs? Like, is it LinkedIn? Um, I mean... Uh, promoting themselves uh, through LinkedIn or Facebook or like maybe hmm. an SEM campaign, etc. Yeah. So again, it will depend on what your objective would be when you want to put yourself out there. So in terms of attracting, let's say, clients, you know, you have to find out where they are. So if they're on LinkedIn, definitely you 
could you know reach out on LinkedIn. It might be in the marketplaces like Upwork, for example. Um, you know, sometimes they put in a premium if you're willing to pay a premium to be, you know, to be featured. Facebook would be where everyone is, and I think you can look at Facebook as an opportunity to network and to just get referrals. So, you know, you kind of have to be very entrepreneurial. You have to, you know, look at ways you can maximize investment if you have money for advertising or to just really rely on, you know, how do you find these people? But definitely try to find first where they are and see how you can maximize your exposure there. All right, thank you. Uh, there's another question from Rhea Saikon. Um, this is for you, Connor. Can we sign up as an agency on FreeUp? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, if you go to freeup.com, F-R-E-E-E-U-P.com, there's going to be just a get started button, and then you'll just say that you're interested in offering services, um, and, and there's actually a specific sign up form for agencies. Um, and, and just, you know, fully transparent we we do have a an application process for agencies and BAs to get onto the platform so you'll fill out an application um, you may have a an interview with someone from our team just to learn more about your agency and understand the services you offer and how you've worked with clients in the past um, and then if if everything checks out you'll be accepted into the platform and be able to start taking jobs from clients Thank you. Okay, so there's another question from David Borden. Um, hi guys, I run a digital marketing agency and we do some white label services for some agencies in the US and Europe. Uh, what I am testing now is a pooling possible VAs into an employment pool. How, however, how do I accurately price? Would it be better to use a flat rate or a per service rate? Uh, would you have any idea on um, price, like pricing wise, Connor or Eileen? Um, I think I understand it correctly what he's saying. So he he runs an agency that work like White Labels works with other agencies in the U.S. and he's asking how he should price his services. Is that correct? Um, so let me clarify with him. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm not Hello. sure if, yes. Hi, Eileen. <laughs> Hello. So, sorry. Is it a question on? Hello. Can you hear How, me? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I can hear you. Um, Hello. yeah, I, I need to figure out if, um, Hello. it's, it's how they price, how they should price their service or how should they price or like like the rate of the the how they should pay the okay. person they're hiring. So, um, I'm ah, going to so use... he answered already. He said yeah. more so for outsourcing VA services. So yeah, for okay. their services. So okay, for so people. I'll I'll go first, and hopefully Connor can you know yeah. also share some insights. Uh, Payoneer has a freelancers survey report, and it actually shows us the average rate of you know what's what's being charged depending on the service that's offered. So there are averages. I think you know. Whilst there's no hard and fast rule about pricing. There will be averages given peers even below. And, you know, so if you have a more unique skill to offer and it's not everyone's forte, you can probably price that a little higher than, than what's usual. But always look at, you know, studies or trends or surveys. You can also ask your friends or other companies if they'll disclose. But, you know, you also always have to make sure that you're not pricing yourself out of the industry or also under charging because that would be unfair for you. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, pricing, like Eileen said, a, a lot of it comes down to the market and just what people are willing to pay for it. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with 
uh, you know, your <clears throat> your experience, your expertise, um, and how much you know about a given skill set. Um, and then also a lot of people look at um, location when it comes to pricing too, right? So where is this person located? Um, what are kind of market rates for people in that area as well? Um, so I think the report on averages is a great thing to look at um, when you're setting your own pricing. And then when it comes to, and I don't know if this was a part of his question, but I'll just answer it anyway. When it comes to actually hiring out those services that he's offering to the, the agencies that he's white labeling for, um, in those situations, I would probably go with someone on an hourly rate. Um, if you get into fixed rate, it gets a little tricky um, and you really, with different projects, it's hard to sometimes estimate time and then they may work more time and not get the hourly rate they want. So I personally like hourly rates. Um, you can make sure that you and the person you hire are on the same page um, going into it, that they're happy with the rate. Um, and then you can just manage their hours so that you still are making money with the uh, the client that you have that you're white labeling for. Right, thank you guys. Um, so I think we can entertain one more question before we end the webinar. Uh, the question is uh, from Susan Osorio. Uh, we used to have VA clients from abroad, but we got traumatized when two of them ended up not paying us for work already done. Is there any solution for this? Maybe like, uh, like security protocols that we can do um, for like, when you're a VA agency, what would you recommend for VA agencies or VAs? Um, anyone can answer. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And sorry to hear that that happened. Um, I hate hearing that. It's just a very annoying part of the industry. Um, yeah, I mean, one way to, to avoid that is by going through a marketplace like FreeUp or Upwork or Fiverr, whoever it may be. Um, I know with us, at least, we, we guarantee pay if the work has been completed to the freelancer or the agency. Um, so, I mean, there's been situations where we as a company ha have run into this as well, where a, a client, you know, their credit card failed or whatever it is, and then they ran away. Um, we still pay the freelancer for the hours they worked um, so that there isn't any issues like what was mentioned. Uh, when you're when you're working with a client that you're not using through a marketplace, it's it's a little trickier. Right? You can you could try to like have a, one of their credit cards on file. Um, I don't know. There there may be some solutions through Payoneer too. <laughs> Eileen, is there anything they could do that would you know secure their payment um, by using Payoneer? So it might not be directly with Payoneer, but it's something that you can do as an entrepreneur. So if I yeah. if I were in your shoes. I would actually ask for a down payment to start mm. work. Nice. And you know, you can also break down maybe milestones if you're not so sure about this client. If it's maybe 50% completion, you require a certain amount that gets paid and then full payment at the end of something. So, yep. you know, you can give them a teaser to this file until they settle the payment. So there are different ways that you can probably employ but you know usually breaking down the deliverables with payments is a good way to assess if this client of yours will not run away with your hard work yeah that's great advice yeah thank you all right thank you everyone uh for joining this webinar and of course thank you for our two speakers for today for the very informative presentations and for answering our questions um we'll see you next time for our future uh webinars uh thank you again and have a great evening bye so much. Thanks, everybody bye. thank you bye-bye